What's up guys, it's Hollywood here and I just wanted to make a quick video for you on how to uh, replace your factory car stereo in a 2007 Ford Explorer XLT. Trim level doesn't really matter um, it, other than some of the wiring, uh, but they're all going to be the same in this year. I think it is 2006 through 2010. Don't quote me on that. I do believe it is correct though. So anyways, we have the factory stereo. Um, I don't know if there's something's wrong with the stereo or the speakers, but I know that only that speaker works, and I do believe the one in the back on the same side. So, anyways, uh, to get this going, as you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, we're going to remove the trim around the shifter. Uh, inside of the center console, there is two 7 millimeter bolt screws they're screws basically but uh, you're gonna pull these out um, keep track of them so you don't lose them and then uh, we're gonna start prying this up and it's got clips all the way through it, it has two clips back here um, which if you invest in some of these fancy tools here you can actually go inside of here pry up on this after you take those out um, remove those clips there's two more clips down here on each side and then uh, you'll go around this, which I've already popped it loose, but you'll use your tool to kind of pop this off. So we will take the ring off, just set that to the side, and then I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the bolts out of here. And we will get this center console uh, piece removed here. really wish I would have charged my drill for this, but that's okay. And we'll throw those in there just for good measure so that way I don't lose them. Get your pry tool in here. And that one came up extremely easy. So did that one. So then we're going to lift up on this. To release those front clips there. We'll get this out of the way. And then uh, what you want to do is you actually want to turn this. Uh, to where you can gain access. Oh my goodness, look how dirty it is in there. Um, so that way you can get to these clips in the back here. It does have a little push tab, which is on this side right here. You'll push in on it and pull out. I'm just going to take both hands to do this. Uh, but same on this one, if I can show you here. The push tab is actually right there. So kind of hard to see i'm using my phone as a camera so i'm gonna go ahead and get these unplugged and um, next thing we're gonna do is put the key in the ignition pull the shifter back it's gonna allow room for this to come out um, there are a couple clips down here as well we're gonna have to kind of pry out and forward or backwards i should say uh, out and backwards to where it will clear the edge of this little guy right here so you can see that this sticks out farther so we need to kind of pull out to um, the outside of the vehicle and then back to the back side of the vehicle and then there will be several clips right here um, one thing i do want to point out is this is the airbag light very hard to see um, but do not unplug this uh, while the key is on if you do you will have to take it back to the dealership to get this light to go off um, and then also you will have an airbag light right in that area if I'm not mistaken. So um, I do believe that is where it is. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pull some of this out and then um, I will start this back up and show you a little more about taking it apart. All right, so um, I got the two plugs out and like I said, the push tab is here on the side. Um, this one does not have a button, so it is actually easier if you use your pry tool. Um, get right in there push right there that will flatten that out so where that sharp edge can come out of the clip uh, this one on the other hand was quite easy you can see that it actually has a button on it right there push that down pull out this one come out pretty easy so uh, also I did go ahead and do one side of it just so you can kind of see the difference see that one is in there um, behind this plastic tab here and this one I've actually already pulled partially out again sorry for the terrible camera angles but I am using my phone 
So you pull out and back. I actually used my pry tool. I went inside of here, pry out just a little, and then back. So, and then it'll release that clip that's inside of there. So I'm gonna get this part off and then we will continue on. Okay, so got both of those out. Like I said, use this handy tool here. Works extremely well for doing this. Um, now we are pulling off the clips around the uh, radio bezel and they do tend to get stuck so it is best to slide this up in here and because they are little clips you just heard that one pop go over to the other side i heard that one pop so we're going to continue on all the way i'll try to do this one-handed and there we go that part is out so now we will need to put the ignition in or the key in the ignition Make sure to set the old parking brake. Make sure that's on there good. Go ahead, shift this down. Then you can turn the key off. It will not allow you to take the key out uh, because it is not in park. So then we will go ahead, pull this back up and over the shifter there. And then we will get to the wires behind here. Um, so I will show you the wires that are back here. Um, again, I'm not going to unplug the top one because the ignition is not in the off position and I do not want, uh, I work at the dealership, but I don't want to have to, uh, drive around with that light on and have this thing replaced. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of this off. It does take two hands. Uh, I'm a one man crew here, so no cameraman. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get the plugs out and then I will start the video back up, uh, to kind of show you where everything is and how it comes apart. So. See you in a second. So we got the plugs undone here. Um, you can take this one out. I'm actually going to leave this because these are vacuum hoses. And um, this thing here didn't want to come out real easy. So I think I'm just going to leave it in there. Um, as you can see, it left me plenty of room um, to get it out of the way to where I can access these seven millimeter screws. There's four of them, two on this side, two on the other side. Um, did not unhook the airbag light, so it is still hooked up. Vehicle's still in first gear. Uh, but at this point, we can go ahead, put it back in park just for shape, safety measures. Or if it's in your way and you need to get to anything, you can leave it there. Uh, but you can kind of see um, this plug here. Extremely hard to get off. Those prongs hold really tight inside of there. Uh, the rest of these plugs, like this one up here, this one up here, um, these were really easy to come out. Matter of fact, this one here, I am now realizing that it is just a dummy spot. So um, it is wired for it, but there is nothing there. There's no button, so this vehicle does not have that option. Um, also remove the small plug above the vacuum lines just because that one is pretty short. So that one... Um, was keeping it from being able to come out of there. You can kind of see the harness here, so pretty tight. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and start removing the 7 millimeter screws. Okay, so got everything apart here. Um, removed the four 7 millimeter screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them, right here. Um, and we're just going to pull straight out on the radio. And now for the sake of movie, movie magic, I went ahead and pulled this out, unplugged everything because it is extremely hard to do with one hand. Um, these things have been plugged in since 2007, so um, they are kind of set in their way. Uh, but you will pull radio out. There's going to be a couple plugs on the back. Um, the antenna plug here over on the passenger side. Um, it is quite tight. It is very hard to get out of there. Um, you just have to kind of work it, wiggle it back and forth, twist on it just ever so slightly. Uh, and then it will come out. Um, you can use a tool, uh, but this, uh, this really isn't strong enough. And there's not enough lip on the thing to get a hold of it. Uh, but right here, there's a push button on the top. You just push it and rock the plug back and forth just a little. It comes out. Uh, same here, plug is on, or the push pan is on the top. Rock the plug a little, it comes out. And then we have the... FOMOCO radio out of there this big old monstrosity heavy 15 20 pound radio and we will be putting a touch screen stereo in there um, so that way you can kind of see what's going on there so I'm going to go ahead and get all my wiring done 
um, for my harness. I did buy the aftermarket uh, harness adapter and it will plug in also the radio um, antenna adapter. So I got one for this because this will not plug into the factory radio. And then we've got the two plugs here. I don't believe we'll be using this one. I think we'll only be using this, but we will see. So I'm going to go wire this up and I'll be back. Well, with the power of time and a little bit of movie magic, I connected all of these connectors and um, just went ahead and pre-wired it. I'm doing a mock-up. I highly suggest you do this. Make sure that your aftermarket plug fits. Get all your cables hooked up plug it in. I still have to do the dash kit and everything, so that's still coming. Uh, but go ahead and plug it in. Make sure that everything works on your radio. Um, also, I um, <clears throat> have this right here, which is the parking brake input. I did look this up. This one is a positive. A lot of them are negative. Some of them have pulses and codes, uh, but this one is a 12 volt positive. So I have looped it into my remote output turn on so that way it has a delay. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. If it does, great. If not, I will find another way. Um, you really should be wiring this to your parking brake for safety reasons, uh, but this is for off-road use only. Um, so this will not be uh, used on the road, so therefore I can bypass it. Um, but we will see if this will work. Um, like I said, if it doesn't, I'll find another alternative and we will get past this little piece here. Uh, but I do not recommend that you do this if you were going to be driving this vehicle on the road. Um, like I said, this is for off-road purposes only. Um, so that way uh, my passengers can use the features. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and mock this up, plug this thing in. Um, I still got a couple backup cameras I've got to wire in and stuff like that. Also got to find the reverse wire um, pickup, which I think maybe in here i will have to look that up so don't quote me on that yet uh so anyways we're gonna plug this thing in uh i went with an aftermarket radio uh this one is just a boss audio system um it is very thin because it does not play dvds i really don't need that feature um i mainly want this for uh, navigation and uh, trail maps and stuff like that so anyways we're gonna hook this up um, test everything out, make sure everything works, make sure Android Auto and Apple CarPlay works, and then we will remove the harness, do the install kit up here, and then hard mount the, the uh, stereo itself, and um, then we will start focusing on backup cameras and uh, forward-facing cameras and things like that. So anyways, let's get this going. Okay, so got it mocked up in there, got it sitting to where it'll just kind of chill right there. Go ahead and turn it on, make sure it does power up. So far, so good. And the only thing I hooked up really is the, um, the main power wiring harness and the antenna. So um, that went away by itself. So I'm hoping that the wiring that I did worked, but everything seems to be working. We got sound, still no sound out of the speaker over here, so I have a feeling that the speaker is blown. So we will be replacing the door speakers in the future, but um, as of right now, that's basically the only one that works and one sort of works in the back there. But it does work. Um, I would tune it in and play music, but you know, um, the interwebs doesn't like it when you share music. Hopefully this static noise isn't copyright as an under copyright or anything. Um, so if it is hey, sorry, no offense. I just, I really like this song. So anyways, does work up. I'm going to go ahead and um, plug in my Android auto, make sure that my phone will um, control the radio, the way it is wired and we will go from there. So awesome works. Okay. So, uh, here is a lesson learned. Never done this one before, but, uh, it says to connect it to positive, you know, of the parking brake. Um, however, it must have a pulse signal or something because it says Android Auto cannot connect right now when it's safe to do so. Check your Android phone. I did check my phone and it is telling me to apply the parking brake. So um, that uh, little jumper that I came up with there, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to come up with something different. Okay, so did a little research, a little um, searching, soul searching, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the way to get around that, um, little parking brake switch, 
Um, you can see here my Android Auto is working. Um, even though the wire says that it is a positive, and I did verify it in the book, it says it's a positive, but if you will just ground the wire on this style radio on a uh, Boss touchscreen, whatever model it is, um, you can just ground it and it will bypass it, so then it will work. And you can use your Android Auto, and then you can use your maps and everything on there as well. So just a quick update, um, I got around it by um, grounding it directly. I just ran it to the ground um, of the harness of the radio, spliced it together, recrimped it. Um, everything is now working, radio works. I still only have like one or two speakers, maybe so I'm gonna have to do some speaker replacement. Um, and also still have to wire up the amplifier subwoofer and the backup camera and the forward camera on here as well. So. Uh, that will all come. I just want to get this in. I'm going to do the dash mount now. I'm going to go ahead and tidy up all the wires. Uh, get this thing mounted in there nice and good. And then I will um, attack this again when I get ready to go ahead and run the cameras and everything. Because that is going to take some time. So anyways, uh, just another quick update on it. Um, did get it to work. So I will um, continue on here in just a moment. I'll go ahead and get everything plugged back in. Uh, make sure everything fits good and then uh, give you a final look of how it turned out so we'll see you in a second okay you can see here i've got everything all wired up uh, i did pull the stereo back out so that way i can tidy everything up and i just wanted to point out a couple things um, when you are pulling this uh, stereo gauge bezel um, area here the fascia I guess um, there are eight clips um, on the piece that goes around the radio so you've got two up top well let me just rephrase you got four on the side you got one there one there one there and the bottom one is actually right there um, so there is not a clip on this side here but you do still have to pry this out to get it to come around this piece um, and this is the clip you are trying to disengage um, you got one on each side so you got eight total on there and also, um, a lot of people are afraid of this because it is a bunch of wires. But let me tell you, it is extremely simple. Um, basically, you color code everything. Purple goes to purple. You know, this is the right rear positive speaker. And then the other purple with the black stripe would be the negative right rear speaker. And it goes to the purple wire, so on and so forth. So um, that part's pretty easy. Speakers are always the same color. Um, they have not changed that, which I am very thankful for. Uh, the only ones you got to kind of watch is knowing, you know, like what a, um, a trigger wire is or an accessory 12 volt on. This only energizes power when you turn the key on. And then somewhere in here is the yellow one, which is your 12 volt constant. Uh, this one actually, um, will hold the memory of the radio and everything. You want to make sure that these are hooked up correctly. And then the ground wires, uh, always black. So... Uh, but anyways, there are several other wires in here, but it's pretty easy to do. A lot of this extra stuff is for like mute wires and backup cameras and navigation and things like that that the vehicle may come with. This vehicle didn't come with any of those, so it only has the mute wires, um, but those are just not used. So you just want to cap them off, put a cap on it, and then uh, it can't arc out or ground on anything. Um, but do, do like I said, um, always plug this stuff up, verify plug the stereo in, make sure that the power comes on, the speakers are working, uh, go through all your features, touch on the settings, stuff like that. Make sure everything works properly. Um, and then you can pull this back out, which is what I'm getting ready to do. And I will tidy all this up and make it into an actual wire harness. I will leave the wires that I need out and then secure the rest. So anyways, we'll get going on that. And I am actually going to pull this all back apart. Um, like I said, right now this video is mainly just concerned on doing the um, install of the head unit uh, because I am going to go through and clean all of this disgusting stuff up. But um, I am currently not in the shop right this minute and I don't have any shop air. Um, so I want to blow all this stuff up, vacuum it, clean it up real nice so uh, we don't get any squeaks, rattles, vibrations, or smells coming from all of this garbage that's in here. So... Anyways, uh, we'll, get, we'll get, keep going on this, and um, we'll see you back here in just a second. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and took care of my wiring harness, um, got it all cleaned up. Uh, I taped everything together. Um, 
I'm a little OCD and I always do it this way and I've never ran into a problem so far so I just kind of want to throw this out there just a little tip trick take it if you will um, it's virtually impossible to do it a hundred percent to keep everything separate um, but I always do what I can um, to keep my wiring for my speakers away from the wiring of anything with power so um, your 12 volt constant your accessory wire even the ground wire um, remote wire antenna wire um, any of your camera power wires you want to keep all those separate I always tape them separate when I make my harness I have one side for um, sound carrying like RCA's or anything like that and then the other side is for anything that carries uh, 12 volt power um, what this is going to do is this is going to keep um, those annoying sounds like when you step on the parking brake you hear a click in the radio or you turn the windshield wipers on and you hear the engine running through the speakers the ram ram um, yeah, that, that's copyrighted sound by the way, so don't use that. That's mine. Uh, it's Hollywood right there. Uh, but anyways, uh, you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just something that I do. Um, just like I said, a little rule of thumb and mainly because I'm just OCD and I like things to be separate. And if I ever do need to get back into this harness, I will know that one has all the uh, speaker wires in it and then the other one has all the power stuff in it. Um, so anyways, I'm going to flip the camera around and kind of show you where I'm at so far. And while we are talking about it, I do want to um, let you know that if you have any questions about this stuff or you are nervous about it or you just don't feel comfortable um, wiring up your own stereo um, fear of messing things up. Vehicles nowadays, don't get me wrong, this is an older vehicle. This is a 2007 Ford Explorer, Ford baby. Um, and so I'm not real worried. I've done this enough times. I kind of know I'm not worried about messing up any uh, computers or anything like that. I know that if you cross wrong, wrong wires to um, some of these delicate computers of these newer cars, um, it can cause some serious problems. So if you are not comfortable with doing that, please reach out to your local stereo shop. My local stereo shop, sorry, I'm about to drop my phone. Um, my local stereo shop, they um, hook me up with all my supplies. Um, they fill me in. I always bounce ideas off of them, things I'm trying to do. So I'm going to give a shout out to my local stereo shop, which is Audio Source in Greenwood, located on US 31. Um, they are not uh, paying for advertisement or anything like that. I just, I'm in sales, so I understand. Um, word of mouth word of mouth is one of the best things you know they do good work they give good advice um if your stereo shop uh, won't help you out um, with any kind of questions or anything like that just try another stereo shop don't get upset with them a lot of these guys have spent a lot of time in the industry to learn these tips and tricks um, so some may share some mine is good about that but i also support them by buying all of my hardware there um, I don't buy it online and order it and stuff like that. I want to support my local business. So uh, Audio Source in Greenwood, awesome shop. Check out, stop by and check them out. Um, they got a lot of uh, stuff on display, subwoofers, amplifiers, all that stuff. So anyways, uh, back to the install. So you can see here, I went ahead and cleaned this up. Um, a, it makes it easier to tuck in there. Nothing, None of the little wires get hung up. And it also makes sure that you don't unhook any of the butt connectors. I know if you solder them, you don't run into that problem again. I was just too lazy. I have all the stuff. Just didn't do it. Uh, but it is plugged in here. Just like I thought, this one is not used. I'm not 100% sure what all this goes to. Um, but the radio did have several features on it that kind of speak to the vehicle. I do not have radio controls, so I don't have to worry about running a pack system. Um, all I have is the cruise control and so on. So, um, like I said in the video, I keep my speaker wires separate from my power wires. I know this is virtually impossible to do 100% because they are so close together right here. But you can see even the manufacturer keeps them separate. So, anyhow, I just thought that was a little tip. Um, that I would share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and start wiring this up and put it all together. I still got to wire all this stuff, but this is going to come at a later time when I'm actually in the shop and not outside. So um, we'll get this going. I'll get this buttoned up, cleaned up. Um, I'm also going to be using a little bit of kill mat or dynamat or something, some kind of sound deadening um, just on some of the stuff inside of here to make sure that I don't have any rattles or anything. So anyways, on with it. Alright, 
and we got her in there. So all cleaned up, everything's in, everything's working. I did take the original fascia ring around the radio off, so that way I could get that plush mount. I wanted that to fit really good in there. So. Um, if you don't do that, as you can see, the radio already sits back in. That's just how it sits from the factory. It's kind of in there. Uh, but if you don't do that, it will actually push it behind here and you will have a big drop off inside of this to where the buttons are. So anyways, just wanted to give you a final look at it. Got it all back together. No rattles. Everything's good. And it works. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you liked it um and make sure you subscribe i'm going to be doing videos like this uh just kind of showing oh yeah by the way there's that airbag light i was talking about that is because the clock spring that will be going in here because right now i don't have a horn and my cruise control doesn't work because the clock spring is out i'll make a video on that as well but uh do subscribe to the video I uh, appreciate you guys checking it out. Hopefully this was helpful, and I will try to do more stuff like this more often. Until next time.